Previously on The Bill. I've been seconded to work for an intelligence unit in one of the other regions. We're a habit and neither one of us has got the guts to break. I'm not losing you, Cindy. You are. Apparently Raman is off as well. I guess I'll be pushing to be a replacement. You're joking. Ruth Barker, um, I'm TC Hollis. This is WPC Harmon. Uh, we're both from Sun Hill. You've reported a missing child. Yes, yes, come in. Thank you. She's not turned up then. Ah, uh, no, there's no sign. James is still out looking. No, uh, James? Um, Amy's dad, my partner. Um, do you want to sit down? Do you mind if I look around the house? Look, we have checked everywhere. She's definitely not here. No, well, I think we'd better check. It's beyond the safe side. We've known kids hide underneath beds, you know. Can I? Sure, go ahead. Okay, Mrs. Barker, let's start by getting some details about Amy. What does she look like? Um, well, she's about this high, um, dark blonde hair. Oh, this was taken at Christmas. It's a good picture of her. Can we keep this for the time being? Sure, if you like. Thank you. And um, what was she wearing when you last saw her? Uh, well, she was in the garden, so um, she had a coat on, a, a sort of pinky colour with a hood. Um, uh, school trousers, they're black, and a, and a red sweatshirt. Okay, uh, anything else? A hat, a scarf? Yeah, she was wearing her hat. Um, it's one of those South American ones with a, a pattern and uh, floppy bits to cover her ears, you know. And I'm not sure if she had a scarf with her. Okay, that's great. And how long do you think she's been missing for? Um, just under an hour and a half. I know it doesn't sound very much, but she's only seven. I wouldn't normally let her out of my sight. She's going to turn up, isn't she? I mean, she's probably just wandered off to play or something. This sort of thing happens all the time, doesn't it? And approximately four foot tall. She's got dark blonde shoulder length hair. She was last seen at approximately 4 pm wearing a pink overcoat, black trousers, and a red sweatshirt. She's missing from our home on Elberton Road. Anything? Oh, nothing. No. Don't worry. We've got officers out there looking for her now. Love. You got a sec? Not really. What's up? Missing child. Seven years old. Hasn't been seen for over an hour and a half. Sam? Little boy or a girl? Little girl. Amy Tennant. Who's at the house? Um, Honey and Reg are there, but they obviously feel she's vulnerable. Um, I could go down there as family years on, check it out and get them moving if you like. You're transferring to command soon, so maybe that will need continuity, so... Uh, Gov, I can go. I finished the Williamson stuff. You sure? As the FLO, I like to try. All right, Susie, you take it. Get down there and make an initial assessment. Go. There you go. 20 Alverton Road. Thanks. Could you coordinate your uniform, see how many bodies they can spare for the search? Sure. Uh, Sam? Yeah? Uh, cover for me for a minute, will you? I'll just be picking up Jake and I'll be down when I call the child mind. Not a problem. Another box ticked. Mm hmm? Susie, she wants to become sergeant. This turns into a high-profile case, but even the FLO's gonna look good in the CV, isn't it? I'm sure there is more to it than that. We can't hurt, though, can it? Think she'd jump in your grave as fast? Well, Neil is right. If it takes more than one day, the family are gonna need continuity. I'm going off to John and Kate. I can't really offer that. Well, come on, don't tell me you don't want to shoot round there. It's your job. It's what you do best. Harry, <sighs> just really need a change. I didn't expect DCI Caddick to offer me the job, but I hope it works out. She was in the garden while mm -hmm. I was doing the potatoes. You can see from the window, and then I went to put the washing on. I just thought she was still there, you know. Okay. What time was this? Um, about four o'clock, maybe just before, I'm not sure. Right. Um, PC Harmon mentioned that Amy's your stepdaughter. 
Do you have any children of your own? Just one, Todd. Um, he's at a sleepover at one of his friends. 158 from Sierra Oscar. Excuse me. Go ahead, Sierra Oscar. Have you checked? No, why? Do you think I should? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Look, I'm sure Todd is absolutely fine. We just need to make sure Amy hasn't gone round there. I'll call down some more of The search teams are on their way now. Hi, Cheryl. It's Rizal. So what about no, the father, um, James? Have you spoken to him yet? He was already out searching for Amy by the time we got here. Okay, I think we need to speak to him next. No, um, okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Um, she hasn't seen Amy and Todd's been inside all the time. Great. Um, Ruth, I think we need to speak to James next. Could you get him to come home? I don't think he's going to want to stop looking. Could you try and persuade him? It would really be very helpful. I'll try. Amy's house is here, so we need to search all these neighbouring streets, this open ground, also along the river, and the old sewage works. Now, can you round up as many people as you can into the yard for transport? And I don't want to waste time getting searches there. Sorry. Sorry, was that a... Um... No, it's fine. Absolutely fine. No worries. I've obviously got it covered. Where are we up to? Um, Yvonne's going to brief the available units for a house-to-house -house and general sweep of the neighbourhood. Okay. Might be worth putting a request in for a helicopter. How many people do you think you'll have? Most of the release should be free by then. And I've taken pieces Casper and Fletcher off patrol. My TSG standing by if we need them. Okay, good. Um, can I have a word? Sure. Go ahead. Jake's childminder can't look after him for more than another half hour. Oh, so what are you going to do? I'm going to have to pick him up. After that, I don't know. Maybe take him to one of his friends. But can you do me a favour? Can you run things on this until I get back? Of course, yeah. OK. Ask Romani and Terry to check the sex offenders list for anyone who might be in the area. This could be a long one, so we need extra hands. I'll call them in. And I'll bring you up to speed when you come back. And don't worry. I appreciate it. Thanks. Has there been any change in Amy's behaviour recently? Well, we have our ups and downs, you know, but that's the same with all kids, isn't it? What ups and downs? Ruth! We've got any spare batteries. These have run out. Mr. Tennant, my name is DC Susie Sim. I'm from Sun Hill. Can I ask you some questions about Amy? Are you in charge? I'm your family liaison officer. What? Well, Ruth will tell you ever. Where are the spare batteries, darling? They're in the kitchen drawer, if we've got any. Mr. Tennant, if you can give me any information about Amy's routine, her friends, stuff she likes to Would do... Would you, Ruth, I'll tell you all that. Mr. Tennant, we have search teams arriving right now. Any information you can give me, I can relay directly onto them. Instead of one person looking for her, we can have 30 people looking for her. Five minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, can everybody listen up? Amy's been missing for more than two hours now, so we need to be thorough without wasting any time. Will and Dan, can you take your group, please, and check the disused sewage works? Laura and Steve, if you can take your team along the river. Everybody else, you know which streets you should be covering. All right, and please stick to your allotted areas. Don't go off following your nose. If you see something that should be looked at, call it in immediately. Right, any questions? All right, let's get started. What about Amy's mum? Do you think she might have... She's come dead. In? I'm sorry, I didn't realise She committed suicide six months ago. Made sure I was the one to find her. We've been separated since Amy was five. I'm sorry we need to ask these questions. Yeah, sure. Um, so, after she passed away, Amy came to live with both of you? Yeah. How has she been settling in? Has she made friends at school around here? She hasn't actually had anyone around to play, but it's only been six months. She occasionally mentions friends from school. Yeah. Is there anyone she might have gone to see without telling you? No, she knows she's not allowed to go off without telling us. What about her old house, the one she used to live in with her mum? Might she have gone there? It's sold. 
There's new people that live there. She doesn't know them. Even so, I think it's worth checking out. Can I get an address, please? 28 Alma Street. A-L-M-A. Make you some dinner if you want some. So where you been? I told you. Just taking a look at that flat. Oh yeah. Any good? If you like mice. Don't worry, I'll find somewhere. Phil, you don't have to cook me dinner. Hello? Hello, Sam. Hiya. Hey, what's up? Phil, I know it's your day off, but a young girl's just gone missing. How long has she been missing? Long enough to be concerned. She's only just seven. Look, I don't want to mess with you. Yeah, okay, tell me what you need. She lives with her father, and her mother's dead. I need you to check out her mother's old address. And where was it? 28 Alma Street. Alma Street? Yeah. Yeah. It's near Elcott Way. Okay, look, leave it with me and I'll call you back, okay? Work? Yeah, there's a missing kid. They're calling everyone in. They need me to sort a few things out. I'll call you if I'm gonna be late, yeah? Look, I've told you everything I can, okay? James, I know you're frustrated, but we just but need to But what? Push I'm not going to sit around here talking when I can be out there looking, doing something useful. It's very important for us to get as much of a picture of Amy as we can. Not just who she knows, but what kind of person she is. What her behaviour has been like. <laughs> behaviour? She's seven. I was wondering whether she might have gone off intentionally. Whether she's hiding somewhere. Hiding? Like Why? Because I'm such a bad dad. Because she hates me so much, she'd run away. Is that what you're saying? James, that's not what I'm saying. James, I just want to... Oh, please. Ah! <sighs> Ruth. God. Ruth, Ruth, please. Ruth, 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 Ruth please. Check in. I'll check on the search teams. Oops, I didn't mean that. You know that. Um, we're looking for a little girl. She's gone missing from home. She's wearing a pink coat with a hood, black trousers and black shirt. Well, I did see a kid in a sort of reddish coat on the recreation ground this afternoon. What time was that? About uh, four o'clock, maybe half past. Um, can't really be certain. Did you get a good look at her? No, not close. She was over by the trees on the far side, by the river. And do you think it could have been this girl? Well, like I say, I wasn't close enough to get a good look at her face, but um, I suppose it could, yes. Well, thank you. Stephen Patrick Clark, David Charles Layton, and Simon James Ward. How many is that, mate? Five. Enough to ruin a perfectly good evening, then. All the victims have similar profile to Amy. Any abductions? Couple. Okay, you fancy one last tour of Sunnyhill's perverts before you ride <laughs> off into the sunset? Don't be so melodramatic. I'm not emigrating. Well, it's close, isn't it? Come on, get your coat. I'll buy your dog if you're lucky. <laughs> the only halfway decent sighting we've got is from a guy walking his dog in this recreation ground. He says he saw a girl in a pink or red coat. What time? He's not sure. Sometime around 4.15. Oh, well, we know that Amy was at home in the garden at 4 o'clock, so she'd have to move pretty quickly, wouldn't she, to get from her house here, the recreation ground here, in 15 minutes. Mm. You don't think it's her? I don't know. But I don't think we can ignore it. OK. Well, that's Laura and Steve's area, so I'll get them to walk through when they finish their first sweep. Good. You believe kids actually play around here? Place is a death trap, mate. She could be anywhere. You seen anything? Yeah, I will. In there.
What's going on? Simon. Just go back to sleep, yeah? So who's this guy? David Charles Layton. He did 15 months of his three and a half year sentence for indecent assault. It was the neighbour's little girl. But it looks like only the one incident. Yeah, that's what they all say. How long has he been on your license? Four months. He moved here from a hostel in Stratford just before Christmas and took a job at the Jarvis DIY store. Is he legit? Well, he got permission to move, but he's still on curfew. Well, let's go and see if he's sticking his curfew, shall we? Curfew he's got to be back by seven. No, it's way past that now. It's not as if he's just missed the bus, is it? What do you want to do? Go to the DIY store? Because it doesn't shut under late, does it? No. They might have changed the shift. What if I've been here on my own? What? What if you weren't here? I mean, I might have waited for Leighton to come back. I might have kicked his door in. It could have been a disaster. Hi. Did you take sugar? No, thanks. As it comes, it's fine. Where's James? Upstairs. He doesn't lose his temper like that often, does he? He's just worried about Amy, that's all. So it's not something he does usually? No. No, I just said. You know why I have to ask, don't you, Ruth? Yeah, sure. We're not going to find her like this, even if she was here. And if she fell in the water, well... Don't, Steve. I'm just saying, you've got to be realistic, haven't you? What's the chance of us finding her in the dark now? Well, it's better than not looking for her at all. You wait till you've got kids. That water's going to be icy. Two nine eight from seven five nine receiving. Go ahead, Steve. We've checked the canal edge, no sign, but it's pretty hard to see down here. India ninety nine. Well, thermal imaging might do better. All received. India ninety nine have been called to another incident. When they come in, I'll see what they can do. What happens when we've covered our area? We move further out. How far? As far as we need to. Honey! Honey! Over here! You got an evidence, Ben? Well, it matches the description of Amy's hat. Pink with those ear flaps. Yeah, but you think if someone had just dropped it, it'd be out here somewhere, not under the bush like that. Unless someone was trying to get rid of it. Where did they find it? Halvan Road. Is it Amy's? I don't, I don't know. Can I smell it? It would be better not to. I'll need to take DNA swabs from all of you to compare with any DNA evidence we may pick up from the hat. It looks like Amy's. We bought it on the market last year. She liked the pattern. They had lots of them. 
I mean, this could be anybody's. And that's why we need to keep it for forensics. Did Amy know the area around Halvan Road? Well, we might have been there before, but only by car. James? Well, um, no, no, she, um, she wouldn't be able to find it on her own. Would it be okay to do DNA swabs now? Yeah, sure. Just take a couple of seconds. <laughs> In your mouth for me, please. That's good. Thank you. So she can put it to the family. Phil. I've just checked Amy's mum's old place on Alma Street. There's no joy there. Do you want me to come back to the station? Uh, no, 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 you're fine. Um, it's a day off, isn't it? Look, Honey and Reg found a hat that matches the one they think Amy was wearing. Where was it found? I mean, I can, um, I can check the CCTV. Well, if you don't mind. It was found on Halvan Road. Right, there's some shops there. I'll, uh, I'll check them first. See if there's any footage of the pavement outside. Thanks, Phil. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Even if David Layton hasn't been to work for a week, it doesn't mean there isn't a legitimate reason for it. If you ask me, he's done a bunk. He's up sticks and he's gone to Newcastle or Swansea or someplace like that so he can drop off the radar and do what he likes. Well, if he's done a runner, he can't be in the frame for Amy's disappearance, can he? It all depends on when he left, doesn't it? Oh. Hi, dear Sir Costa. Hello, Sam. Any progress? Uh, we're just one unaccounted for. We think we found Amy's hat in Halvan Road. You're where? Halvan Road, round the corner from Layton's. Can you go back there? Okay, no, no, no. We, we can go back and check again. Thank you. Okay, bye. What? They think they've found a hat that belongs to Amy. It's on Halvan Road. Well, that's halfway between here and Leighton's flat. We need to get back there now. What if he's still not there? I guess we've got a suspect. No, left. Mm. That's the front, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Okay, I need to look at the tape from three o'clock this afternoon onwards. Um, I'm not supposed to stop recording. It's security. You got another video, yeah? Uh, just the one that I watch stuff on when it's quiet. Yeah, when it's like this, you must be running off your feet. Mm. So where is it then? Uh, it's out the back. Okay. I'll watch today's tape on that and you can start a new one now. So can I come round then? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. No one's supposed to come back here except the duty manager. Uh, that's me. It's, um... Security, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm a policeman. Mm. Right. You okay, James? You hear all those stories on the news. That kid's gone missing. See everyone out looking for him. You see all those people searching in the fields and you, you just know they're not gonna find them. Not alive. That's not always the case, James. Sometimes missing children just turn up and sometimes... You, you gotta say that, haven't you? It'd be a week, or maybe a month, comes on the news again, found a body, or they've arrested someone, and then you find out what they've done to them. Some pervert that everyone knew should have been locked up but wasn't. I keep thinking, what if this morning, it was the last time I'll ever see her. What we did was at breakfast. I told her not to spill her milk on the table. <laughs> he 
Yes. David Layton. Yes. DC Perkins, DS to Costa, Sunny or CID. As uh, uh, become him. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Bit of a come down for you, innit? Even from a hostel in Stratford. I manage. Well, how can I help you? Can you tell us your movements today, from about three o'clock this afternoon till now? Uh, today, uh, I think so. I, um, I was at the library between three and four, and then I went to the supermarket and I came back here. Uh, that must have been about half past five. That's interesting. Because when we came round earlier, you weren't here. You do realise that as a condition of your licence, you're still under the restrictions of curfew, don't you? If you breach that, you'll go back inside, mate. For visiting the toilet? Oh. There's no bathroom. To use the facilities, I have to go down the hall. That must have been uh, where I was when you called before. Really? <laughs> Please. First of all, let me say thank you for all your hard work and the hours overtime you've done. Uh, but it's nearly 10 to 8 and the next shift have already started their sweep. So if you can make sure that you've logged... Sarge, uh, <coughs> well, if I sort of saying to you, I'd like to stay behind, you know, and uh, we'll lend a hand. Yeah, I'm fine to stay too, Sarge. I will as well. OK. Well, those of you who can stay, that's fantastic. Just give me five minutes to get that organised. And those of you who can't, the van's there to take you back to Sun Hill. And thank you once again for all your hard work. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, Sergeant, I would stay, but I've got to go back to see to the kids. Oh, don't worry about it. Look, seeing as you are heading back, you couldn't take these witness statements up to CRD. Not much here. Oh, I know. Now, what are you talking about? Uh, oh, I may have put it in my wallet, but I might have dropped it. You can drop the comedy routine as well. All that stuff about the library, the supermarket. It's a load of old cobblers, isn't it? As is you saying you've been off work because you've been ill. What? You thought we wouldn't speak to your manager? He says you haven't been around for nearly a week, so tell me where you've been. I'm going to get properly serious with you. You mean so far it was just for fun? What did you say to me? Terry, come on. Look, what is it you don't want to tell us? Nothing. I'm trying to be as helpful as I can. Whatever it is you think I did. We're not thinking anything. We simply want to figure out where you were and what you were doing this afternoon. Oh, it's got to be another child, isn't it? You wouldn't question me because some little old lady's been mugged. Well, if that's what it is, you, 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 you just better read the, the psychiatric assessment. What happened before was wrong. I know it, I accept it, but it was an isolated incident. It won't happen again. I'm afraid that is just not good enough. And your unwillingness to cooperate with us is just going to make matters worse. I'm telling you the truth. I haven't spoken to, touched, looked at another child since the day I went into prison. Not even the photographs of my own grandchildren. If I see a child and crossing the street, I, I turn away. I swear to you, that is the truth. I'm afraid I can't accept that. David Lane, I'm arresting you on suspicion of abduction. You do not have to say anything, but my army defense... Well, if you do not make all, right, all right, I'll tell you, just stop. Sit down. Right, Mr. Layton, speak. I haven't been to the warehouse because I've got another job. That's where I've been all day. What other job? Oh, it's, it's in a cafe. I do the dishes, clear the tables and sweep up, that's all. It's all right. It's got nothing to do with children. Just tradesmen and builders. Why didn't you tell anybody about this? You're perfectly aware that your probation officers have to be informed if any of your circumstances I'm, change. I'm, I'm, I'm really not doing any harm. I'm really not. I'm, I'm there from seven in the morning till seven at night. It just means that I don't get back home until after the curfew. That's all. That's the only reason I wasn't here. It really is. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that, so... When you get back, yeah, thanks. Uh, Acting Sergeant Hemingway asked me to bring you these. Right, thank you. How's it going? Well, 
Not a lot to go on and it's dark. I mean, it's your worst nightmare. Let them out your sight for two minutes and they're gone. I see you're keeping yours close to hand. Yeah. Well, I'd rather he was tucked up in bed, but you're not free, are you, for about an hour? Oh, so I'm sorry, sorry. I've just finished my shift on my own. Kiss to see you. Of course, sir. yeah, sorry. Thanks, anyway. Uh, look, I don't know if you'd want, but I mean, he could come back to my place. Oh, Liam's got a few ton in his room. It might be more comfy. You sure? Yes, of course. You'd be doing me a massive favour. Well, one more child's not going to make any difference, is it? No. Thanks, Laura. If the cafe owner confirms what you said, we won't be coming back. Oh. Look, um, do you have to tell him, Tony, about why you want to know? It's just that I don't want to go back to being a bloke with a label. Sex offender. Not now. I like it there, and it, they like me. You got that label, mate. Is this what you did? Once. One incident. It wouldn't happen again. Uh, in the warehouse, they knew the manager. He never said anything directly, but he had this air of superiority, like he was doing me a big favour just by allowing me to be there. Look, I haven't got anything else. I just want to be a real person again, with a real life. And that's the only reason I didn't tell anyone. I understand that. But you have to understand that it's not your choice to make. There are going to be certain restrictions on what you do now. And that's the way it's always going to be. I just wanted things to go back to being normal. If your alibi doesn't stand up, I will be back. In the meantime, I'm leaving a uniform at your front door. So don't even think about going anywhere, you understand me? Thanks for your help, Mr. Layton. I didn't abduct anyone, you know. This tape. Oh, you watched it all then? Yeah, I watched it all. And there's something not quite right. What? Well, if this was today's tape, it'd show me coming in here, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, talking to you, you going over there just before you turned it off. Yeah, I suppose. So why doesn't it? What? Why am I watching yesterday's tape or Sunday's tape? Where's today's tape? Oh, I think I might have left that one in the, uh... Don't think you did. Move back. Sorry. What do you think that's funny? I've just wasted an hour and a half while there's a seven-year-old girl still missing. Oi! Do you know what I should do with you? I should run you in for obstruction. Pathetic. What are you doing? I'm taking the tapes. You can't do that. My boss will be back in a minute. Yeah, watch me. I'm private property. I tell him he can't do that. Get him I'll on. get the sack. Out. I'll report you. Yeah, go on then. Stop him. Give him back. Thank you. Come back. Phil, what was that? Yeah, I know he's an idiot, but he's not exactly unique, is he? It couldn't have been any simpler. You take the tape out of the machine and give it to me. Now I should go back in there. Oh yes, and do what? You know you're already on CCTV actually assaulting him, don't you? I'm not now. You know, I came out here because I thought you'd need a hand. I was lucky I turned up when I did. What is this? Listen, Cindy's ended it. She told me a couple of days ago. Now she's looking for a place for her own. And you're okay about that? It's not my choice, is it? Well, you could try and do something about it. Look, Cindy and me have been here before, all right? I've tried. It's her call. I'm not going to stop her now. No, oh, he's a good worker. <laughs> Maybe not as sorry to think of what a job like this, but... I'm not complaining. So can you confirm that he was here all day today? Except for half an hour for lunch, yeah, he was here till seven. Listen, he's not in some sort of trouble, is he? Oh, no, no, absolutely not. We just need to confirm his movements, that's all. Do you live here, Mr Costello, above the shop? Sure. Last 30 years. Any children around? Grandkids, maybe? Yeah, grandkids all in Canada. So no kids here, usually? No. Why? No reason. Thanks for your time. Sorry to disturb you. Come on. Yeah. What were you doing back there? Well, I think we should have told him. 
You don't think Mr. Costello would have twigged with that massive hint that you dropped? Well, if he does, he does. <sighs> Listen, no one could have handled Leighton like you did. Oh, come on, Terry. That's a compliment! Look, uh, let's just not go over this again, okay? I've made up my mind, I'm not staying. Hello, Neil? Yeah, Leighton's alibi checks out and that's the last one. Okay. Right, with that's all. Yeah, thanks for money. No go on the suspect, he's in the clear. Is that good or bad, eh? So what about the family? Anything there? Well, as far as I can tell, the normal people, I mean, they went through a tough time when James's ex-wife committed suicide, but basically the normal people trying to make a go of it second time round. Nothing stands out. Not even a hunch. Well, there's, there's just this one thing, right? I mean, James lost his temper with Ruth earlier and she was trying to be supportive. I mean, he may have been stressed, but it's just something the way she reacted, you know, that made me think maybe she was used to him lashing out like that. Physically? Maybe. Yes. I, I tried to talk to her about it later, but she didn't want to go into it. I didn't push too far, obviously. Okay. Well, you did the right thing. We just got to keep an eye on him. How do you think James is going to react to the idea of an appeal in the morning if we don't get any further? Well, he's anxious to do anything that might help find her. They both are. And how are they going to react to the idea of us calling off the search tonight? If it's a question of manpower, the shift asked for us to join the search at seven, and most of the team have volunteered to stay on. Yeah, I know. But there's a limit to how effective any search can be in the dark, no matter how many people we've got on it. Okay, we'll start again at first light. Okay. Thanks. Do you want me to tell him? No, no, I'll do it. Okay. If Amy's just wandered off and got lost, I think we would have found her by now. I'm gonna have to start treating this as an abduction. Oh, no, I'm sorry. For what? I said I'd call you if I was going to be late. I didn't, I didn't finish at the early hours of the morning. So. Did they find the little girl? No, not yet. Oh. Listen, Phil, I, I talked to Julie last night. Not Julie, your mate. Julie, my sister. She's still got a spare room at her place. And I've said I'll move in. Bit small, but anything's better than living here. Well, isn't it? I've got to go. I'm late already. So we'd like to do a press conference. Press conference? What's that? That's just an appeal for information. Anyone who might have Amy. What do we have to say? Would someone write it down? Well, we've got a press officer, Mia Perry. She'd help you with that. You could write your own thing if you prefer, but the main thing is to publicise Amy's disappearance. So anyone with information can come forward straight away. Yeah, OK. Nothing to help. OK, good. What about the searches? I mean, they're going to carry on, right? Yeah, of course. And now there's uh, light, we can cover a lot more ground, so. Excuse me. Mia Perry will contact you once she's got everything sorted. I'm going to be there, but I've got to go and get Jake from Laura's and take him to school, so. Don't worry about it, I'll get Ruth and James to the yard. Okay, thanks. Hey. What's this? It's a number for a nanny agency my brother uses. 
Very efficient, very reliable. Give them a go. I will. Thanks. <laughs> Perry should be waiting for us in there. She's a press officer you said about. That's right. You all right, James? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. The timelines are still approximate at the moment. I need to check James's statement. But what we know so far, Amy went out to play in the back garden about 10 to 4. Ruth saw her from the kitchen window at about 4 o'clock. Then at about 20 to 5, James comes home, has a chat with Ruth, asks her where the kids are, Ruth says Amy's in the back garden, but when James goes to look for her, she's not there. Amy's hat was found in Halvan Road, right? Yes. We've got a fairly sketchy sighting of a child on the Hadworth Recreation Ground, approximately 4.30pm. I mean, from Amy's house, you could go down the Halvan Road to get there. Well, we need to prioritise the door-to-door -door along that route. Anything else? No. I've got to correlate any other possible sightings and times. Still, maybe the TV appeal will bring something else in. I'm going to the yard in about five minutes, so keep me posted, will you? Well done. Thanks. So, once we're all seated, I'll make a statement and then you can make the appeal. Well, they want to ask us any questions. No, no, don't worry about that. I'll deal with any questions afterwards. All you need to do is concentrate on reading the appeal. Listen, I'm not sure I can go through with this. I think I'm going to mess it up. I mean, is there any chance Ruth can do it? You're her dad, James. You're the one she'll want to hear. <clears throat> yeah, but what if... Come do it. You can. All right, I'll give it a go. Where was that? Yeah. Yeah, got that. Do you know what time James left yesterday? Are you sure? Amy is seven years old. She has shoulder length blonde hair and blue eyes. She's 1.3 metres tall. And when she was last seen, she was wearing a red overcoat, school sweatshirt, black trousers and black shoes. She also had on a distinctive hat like this. Information on this case is limited, however, if you do have any questions. So, you're now trying to confirm the timelines for the family when Amy disappeared. You found something? Maybe, yeah. James was pretty vague when he gave Susie an account of his whereabouts yesterday afternoon, although he said he left work at 4 o'clock. Now, I've just spoken to his boss, and he said he left at 3.30, which is half an hour earlier. My name is James Tedder. Where was he working? In Hoxton, which is only a couple of miles from his house. Amy the question is, given it's so close, why don't it take him over an hour to drive two miles? And there's another thing. Whichever way he came back from Hoxton, he would have had to drive up Halvan Road to get home. Where Amy's hat was found. Right. Go over his timeline again. Double check everything. We need to account for every minute of his journey home. And if we can't? Then he becomes our chief suspect. Amy, if you can hear this, you haven't done anything wrong. We, we love you very much. Please come home, sweetheart. Next time on The Bill. Very convincing, isn't he? A bit too convincing, right? You're treating him like he's a suspect. Well, to be honest, at this stage, that's exactly what he is. Did you hear Amy talk? Shut up! Talk. Shut up! Stop it! You have to tell us everything. Everything, otherwise we can't help you. Help me!